This is going to be a simple way to click something with your mouse and then right click somewhere else and then the selected object will move towards that position. There's definitely limitations up front. You're going to need AI pathfinding if you're going to want to move around objects like walls and through doors and things like that. But if you don't care and you're just trying to make a simple game, well, this is how you do it. All right, so I have an empty 2D Unity project opened up here and the only thing in this is a 64 by 64 white square. And so I'll just drag this onto the scene. It doesn't matter. We can call this player if we want and I'm going to right click and create a new script and I'll call this move to mouse. We'll double click to open it up. And let's go ahead and get a few variables we're gonna need. Now, the first thing we're gonna wanna control is the move speed of how fast they move to the mouse. So in order to do that, for simplicity's sake, we'll say public float speed, and we could default this to something like five and tweak it later. We then need a private variable. So we'll say private vector three, and we'll call this target. In start, we'll set the target equal to the transform dot position. So the original target's going to be where it already is. So it's not gonna be moving at first. And then in update, what we wanna say is if the input dot get mouse button down, and now you can either do zero for the left mouse button or one for the right mouse button, which is what I'll be doing. So once you left click or right click, what you wanna do is get that position of where you're actually clicking in the game. But you can't just go ahead and use mouse position. You need to convert where you're actually clicking into a vector three position that we can feed to the transform. So in order to do that, it's actually really easy. What we can say is target is equal to camera.main. Quick aside, this camera.main will basically just do a search for something called main camera in your scene. So if you don't have that and you have like custom cameras set up, you're just gonna need to pass one in. That's your main camera. Anyway, so we could say camera.main.screen to world point. And so it'll basically convert where you click on the screen into a world position you can feed to the transform. And we'll say input.mouse position. Since this is a 2D game and we don't want the sprite to just like be moving in three dimensions, what we can say is target.z is equal to transform.position.z. Because in a 2D environment, we don't want to mess with the z-axis really at all. But if you were doing a 3D game, it'd be fine to leave the z-axis. You could just omit this line. And then outside of this if block, at the end of update, we just want to say transform.position is equal to vector3 dot move towards and then it takes a current vector three so we'll pass in our transform dot position now we need a target so we'll use our target vector three and our max distance delta is basically the speed at which we want to traverse that so we'll say speed times time dot delta time and so now with that script done we could drag our move to mouse script onto our player and if we right click on the screen our player will now move around to wherever we clicked but let's say you had two units you wanted to move around. In its current state, if we just put the script on both and we right click, they're just gonna be moving together, which maybe is what you want. But what if you want to actually select one first? We just need to modify our script a little bit. Let's go back to the top of the script and let's first add a Boolean. So we'll say private bool. And I'm just gonna call this selected. And then at the top, there's a few ways to do this, but the easiest way is to make a static list of this script. So what I'll say is public static list of move to mouse. And I'll call this movable objects. And we'll instantiate this to a new list. And then down in our start method, what we want to say is movable objects dot add this. And so this is referring to the move to mouse instance of this script, which both players in the scene currently have. So both will be added at start. In our update function, we only want to move if we have selected equal to true. So what we can simply do is say, if our input dot get mouse button down and we're selected, so we'll only move if we're selected. But now we actually need to set selected to true because right now in its default state, it will always be false. So you'll never be able to move. And so Unity actually is a built-in method. So if we say void on mouse down, we can hover over this and read it. And it says on mouse down is called when the users press the mouse button while over a GUI element or a collider. And this is what we want to do. So really quick, before we actually write the code for this method, we can go back to the editor. We can click on our two players or however many you have that have the moved mouse script. And we can go ahead and add a box collider 2D. And so now back in our on mouse down method, what we can say is selected is equal to true. I'm also going to change the color of the sprite. So we have some visual understanding of what's happening. And I'll say game object dot get component of type sprite render and then we'll say color is equal to color dot I don't know green sounds fine so when you actually click on somebody it'll select them and change their color but what we also want to do is deselect everything else and so to do that what we need to do is make use of our movable objects list and one easy way to do that is to say for each move to mouse object in our movable objects list if the object does not equal this exact instance of it so every other move to mouse script besides this one that we just set to selected, 
we want to say object that selected is equal to false and then the object that game object dot get component of type sprite render we'll set the color back to color dot white which is white's just like the default for a sprite color and so i know that might have been a lot but what this leaves us is you're now able to select one move that and only that one will move and now you can select another it will deselect your original object and you can move this one as well so you can just move one at a time now if we added rigid body 2ds to both of these it set the gravity scale to zero and then if i make a wall with a box collider 2d and a rigid body as well and set the gravity to zero as I said in the intro, you're not going to be able to have Pathfinder that knows to go around this object. So if you try to walk through something like a wall, right now it'll just push it out of the way, which maybe is what you want. Or let's say on this wall's rigid body 2D, we set it to static so that it won't be moved no matter what you do. If you try to go through this wall now and it's static, you know, it's just going to have a hard time. It's trying to get to where your mouse is clicking and it's not smart enough to know, oh, I should go around this thing. So this is where AI pathfinding would come in. But that is a much more complicated topic that will take a lot longer to get into. So for now, this is all you have. You can click and move individual people. If you have walls set up, they'll be smart enough not to go through them at least. So that's a big win. But the last thing I really wanted to show you is if you actually click and move your two boxes onto each other, and then you go back to the window this video is on, you can click this subscribe button and it makes me happy. Also, look, I upvoted my own video. That's pretty cool. You should do that too. Hit the like. <laughs>